Another edition of a Clan Chat. Aaron Murphy joined by the head coach of your Glasgow Clan, Jason Morgan. And Morgie, lots to talk about. I guess the first thing is we now know our Challenge Cup semi-final opponent. It's the Guildford Flames. So your thoughts on that matchup coming up in January? Yeah, just following the the games, uh, the game yesterday. Um, yeah, it's nice. At least now we know our opponent, and uh, they're a good hockey team. Uh, obviously, we had a tough time up in Guildford our, our last trip up there, and um, you know they're they're a highly skilled team. They skate well, so uh, definitely be a good test. Uh, I'm looking forward to to when the final dates are set here. Yeah, look, we've had some, we've had a good result against them, and then we had a tough night in Guilford. But as we proved in the quarterfinals against Cardiff, it doesn't really matter what happened before. It's the preparation, and certainly uh, who's in the lineup, so to speak. Charlie Combs is is back in. Uh, I guess we should do a little bit of an injury update, but on uh, Miss Messers, uh, Callan, Pellick, and Sanch. Yeah, I think Cal's uh, he'd probably be the closest return. Um, he's still dealing with some. Uh, you know, aftermath of that hit he took at home against Cardiff. And um, it, I think now he, he's he's back practicing. Um, yesterday he tried to go full. He wasn't quite there. So we put him back in a, uh, in a different colored jersey today just to avoid some contact. Um, but he is getting close. He's making great progress. Um, we're hoping it won't be too much longer. Uh, Mike Pellick, he had a, a great visit yesterday, uh, a rescan there. Um, you know, on his arm and, and things are progressing very well. Everything's healing the way it should be and even ahead of schedule. So uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping for a, a quick return, um, you know, on, under the, the original timeline given to him. And then obviously Sanchi's still out. Uh, he's, he's at home here dealing with a family issue right now and then will return and his uh, rehab progress is, is also going very well. So he should be back on the ice here very shortly and then um, you know, I'm, I'm longing for the day to, to have decisions to make in my lineup to, to have a full healthy squad. But uh, usually this time of year, every team's dealing with it. So it just seems like it's been one after another. We'll get one key piece back and then another goes out. So uh, definitely looking for, you know, for that time when, when I can experiment with a full healthy lineup. But uh, it is what it is. It's tough, but we, we spoke to uh, Cody Soul yesterday on Confidential, and he kind of said that, you know, it's a bit, a bit of adversity, and it's been tough because, like Forbes, he's had to go back and play defense. He goes, but it does bring you closer together as a group. And is that a fair assessment from the coach's perspective? Yeah, 100%. I, I think when you get guys filling different roles and, and uh, different responsibilities, they dig in to, to do a job to help the team win. And, and I think that just shows the sacrifice and the tightness and the character we have in the locker room that – um, that, that guys are willing to step up and play any role for the for the final outcome of the of the game or the team and um, so yeah Forbes he's, he's obviously he's played D before and uh, but he's he's done a great job for us to hop back in uh, it's it's nice now to get some practices under his belt um, on the back end before entering you know some tough games coming up this weekend but uh, you know I, I think it does bring the guys closer together uh, you know it's a, you always it's, I know it's cliche but playing hard for the guy beside you but it's it's definitely uh, when you do face adversity and it is the guys in the room to, to pull harder for one another and to stick together and uh, come out of it together. And that's what they're doing. Certainly, uh, there's a lot of leadership in that room, including Cody Soul, Dyson Stevenson, of course. So the guys are playing uh, hard. We've had some good results as of late. It's it's coming together. And as you said, it just feels like when you have that luxury to make decisions to make, that's when you'll probably be smiling ear to ear. Maybe that's on the Santa the Santa wish list. So Cal's is probably a day to day or a week to week. Is that safe to say? Yeah, I, I think so. Based on like yesterday, like yesterday he tried to practice full, so he's right there. Um, he just you know, I think when you when you reinsert a player too early, um, if he's playing a bit tentative, it's a fast physical sport, and if he's shying away from a hit or something, then, then you open up the the possibility of getting injured somewhere else. So, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd say that's fair day to day. Um, and then with the other with the other two, um, you know, obviously they're at different stages of their of their rehab, but uh, I think Sanchi probably be aimed to return a little bit sooner than Pelic, maybe, or maybe closer to the same time.
Okay, so probably more week to week for those two guys, but it is yeah. coming. And I, I, I've talked to the owner, uh, Mickey, recently, and he's really excited about having all the guys because he was excited to see Charlie Combs finally play. And now he will kind of kind of alluded to it. It'll be fun to see if Pelly uh, and Combsy play. I go, well, look, it doesn't matter who those guys play with, they're world class. So once we have those guys back in the lineup, I know you and Jeff Battle will be uh, certainly smiling on the bench. You touched on it there. We've got some big games coming up as we head into the uh, the Christmas period. Cardiff uh, Friday, in Cardiff Friday, and then home to Dundee Saturday, and then, of course, home to the Giants on Boxing Day. So it's, it's a busy period now, and then off to Belfast on the 28th. So no rest for the wicked. No, definitely not. And it's, uh, I mean, obviously Cardiff is fresh in our mind. We just, you know, we had three games in a row against them. Um, so two in the challenge cup and one league game. So, um, you know, they I think they're, they're going through a little adversity too with some key guys out injured. And, uh, like I mentioned before, it kind of happens this time of year with the amount of games and travel and over the holiday season that, uh, you know, it starts to catch up with a lot of teams and players and, um, but definitely, uh, definitely going to be a tough, Tough battle again up there in Cardiff. They're a, they're a really good hockey team, and uh, you know we're going to be on our toes. They're going to look for revenge for the the Challenge Cup knockout, and and we definitely got to be ready. And then with Dundee um, coming back, I don't think they play uh, tomorrow, so they'll be well rested and waiting for us. And uh, we got a tough travel day coming back from Cardiff, and and but we're looking to rebound from them. They uh, they handed it to us in their rink, so uh, the guys will definitely be ready for that challenge as well. So plenty of storylines there, and and as we touched on, we know our Challenge Cup uh, semifinal opponent now it is Guildford, but right now it's all about the league with that busy period. So you're fully focused on sort of where there's a bunch of teams on 21 points. We're currently in fourth on 21 points, but it's just to kind of chip away and get some wins under the belt as we head in towards uh, the big visit from Santa. Yeah, definitely. No, it's uh, it's been a crazy year, and I don't know if it's because of all the adversity with the the different injuries and the the length of time uh, that these injuries have come with uh, that sometimes it, it feels like we like I mean we, we only have four games this season where we haven't got points in you know we're out of the 18 league games we uh, you know we've only had the four where we haven't collected at least one point and um, but the 10 overtimes is it's insane I mean that um, that's a lot of close games and and uh, you know, so we're we're definitely definitely looking not to go to overtime uh, over the weekend, but uh, it's part of the game. And and I think we've had a lot of success. And like you said, we're you know the 21 points with with three or four of those overtimes going in our favor. We're right there, and you know near the top. So um, a lot of positives and and a lot that the guys should feel good about themselves and proud of for all the hard work they've put in. Oh, 100 percent. And and you talk about we, we give injury updates on the major injuries. A lot of guys are playing with bumps and bruises, which we won't disclose because it could be used by the opposition. But it, it, it's it seems to be you're right. This time of year, all teams seem to be dealing with it. So we're not uh, unique in that way. But certainly we've had some key personnel go down at inopportune times. When you when you look at how it's gone, and it's a good point by you. We've collected points in so many of those games. What do you say to the guys about overtime? You go, OK, guys, let's just forget about that. Let's, when we get to three on three, we know that we have the skill to get this done it just seems to be uh just hasn't bounced that way in overtime yeah i mean like a lot like a shootout like i mean you're you know in overtime your your offensive guys or guys with speed you know a three on three a lot of ice um you know you, you kind of go with those players and then you know it happens quick so usually like a, a an odd man rush or a scoring chance at one end leads to a you know a scoring chance at the other or a you know, a bad change or a quick up and a, a quality grade A from top of the circles. And when you're giving skilled guys that time and space and um, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, uh, obviously we'd like two or three of those back um, some, some, you know, whatever it was a costly turnover or just uh, losing a battle or, or a change or whatever. So those are things that we focused on and to, to tidy up a little bit if we do go to overtime this weekend. And Charlie Combs, uh, you know, one of your big off-season signings. I mean, you chase Charlie, and you've got a real good relationship with him and his brother Jack as well. But just talk about the impact of, of a player of that ability coming in. It's kind of like uh, making a big uh, mid-season trade or, or signing a top-level free agent midway through the season to have him back in the lineup. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, you know, from day one, he's been around the guys and throughout the team building. He's a, he's a huge personality in our room, and um, you know, I, I think on the ice now you're starting to see him. He's starting to, 
you know, his game conditioning now is picking up. And I think every time he touches the puck, it's, it's ex exciting, you know, for not only his teammates or the guys he's playing with, but for us as coaches, the fans. Um, he's definitely a highly skilled offensive talent. And um, so he's, uh, I mean, obviously I'd like him from the start of the year, but uh, like you mentioned, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air kind of getting him inserted now in the lineup. It's a newfound energy, especially this time of year with all the adversity and, and guys, you know, like going through a lot of, a lot of games now so um definitely good to have him back and, and i know his teammates are excited to have him back uh, not just watching from the sidelines the roar when you pulled the goalie and combs he scores in the last two minutes to to get a point and to go to overtime against coventry that's that might be one of my favorite moments of the season just because of the sheer decibel level in the building how did it feel on the bench when he when he put that puck in <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I was obviously it's uh, you know it's a kind of a gut instinct thing as a coach, like when when to use your timeout, when do you pull your goalie, and who to have on the ice, or uh, do you want to have these guys fresh at this time, or can we you know get a, a timely face off in the you know the opposition zone where I can call a timeout, maybe get the right guys on, or um, so there's a lot of things that kind of go into play in the last like five minutes counting down when you're trailing by a goal, and but uh, no, that was great to see just. To, to, you know, we, we've been chasing a lot of games this year, and it was nice to nice to force one to, to OT and um, to score at the end of a game. You know, when we have been chasing, so uh, yeah, no, it worked out. It worked out good. We won the draw and kept offensive zone time, and and no better guy to finish it off than than Comsey. Uh, the smile was was incredible. I mean, that's his personality, though. He's a competitor. I forgot from his time in Dundee interviewing him. Uh, in my TV role back then, how competitive he was and how fiery he was. And when he scored that goal, you, if it could have been game seven of the Stanley Cup. It didn't matter to him. He just wants to be winning. He wants to get points. Uh, so incredible to have him back in the lineup. We're heading into the uh, Christmas period. I know uh, what your Christmas list is. I'm sure it's four points uh, in the next few <laughs> games. But is there anything from uh, from your childhood? We've asked a couple of the guys at Confidential. Is there is there a Christmas memory or a Christmas gift from when you were a young fella that uh, Santa left under the tree that you remember fondly? Um, well, geez, I, I was an avid sports, uh, you know, like I, I loved all sports. I was a fan of all sports. And um, I, I think I remember the one Christmas, like it, we, we lived in a bungalow when it was downstairs and uh, I woke up and the, obviously it wasn't wrapped like the night before because you couldn't wrap this and it was a ping pong table. So it was oh, uh, wow. yeah, so, something like that was, it was great for me because not only you grow up playing soccer and hockey with the same kind of group of, of young lads and, and uh, you know, throughout your minor hockey career in school and stuff like that. So it was just nice to, to have them over to the house, like your, your hockey buddies or soccer buddies, what we call it football over here and, and, uh, and have the, you know, competing on the, the ping pong table. So that was always fun. I'd say your dad, uh, who just had a birthday as well, David, I'd say he was pretty competitive uh, against you guys as well. <laughs> oh yeah. There's many, many battles on the ping pong table with him as well. And uh, in the summer we played a lot of tennis and, and pool, billiards, darts, like whatever we could compete at sports-wise, we did it. Arm wrestling. <laughs> I don't think I'd have a chance in the arm wrestling circle with him. <laughs> no, no, no chance. I've seen pictures of your dad when he was when he was oh. young and, and bodybuilding. Is yeah. there a Christmas uh, a Christmas message, perhaps, to the Purple Army from Jason Morgan? No, just uh, yeah, like you said, uh, it'd be nice to to wake up, you know, to four points this weekend, and just. Just to thank them for their continued support, and and it's so nice having you know the roar of the Purple Army in the, in our home rank. It gives the guys that extra boost, that extra enthusiasm uh, when we need it. And over the course of the holiday season here, end of December, over Christmas and and New Year's, we got a ton of games, so uh, we need their support more than ever. Well, thanks for taking the time to join us on Client Chat. I know you're busy. You've got to get ready for the for the trip to Cardiff. Best of luck in Cardiff. Best of luck at home against Dundee. And I'll see you in Belfast as well. It's a busy time, but it's a nice time. So happy Christmas to you and your family. And uh, I hope you've got your your elf uh, your elf water bottle ready for the trip to Cardiff. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the best to you and yours over the Christmas period. I really appreciate it, Murph. And uh, right back at you, bud.